My name is Tim Lynch, a consultant neurologist at the Dublin Neurology Institute here at the Matter in Dublin. It gives me great pleasure to talk about this paper coming out in Brain shortly on the missing tau mutation and closing the tau loop. There's a significant historical aspect of this paper going back 40 years. We work done by Stanley Fan at Columbia University in New York and Bud Rowland, Richard Mayhew, and an Irish American family who happened to have frontotemporal dementia at the time. They did a series of clinical work radiological, pathological, and genetic work with Kirk Willemson and Toby Nygaard, identifying this family in detail. I got, became involved in the study of that in the early 1990s. We published a paper in 1994 outlining that pedigree in detail with the clinical aspects and pathological aspects. And subsequently, we did collaborative work with Mike Hutton, Peter Huting, and Alison Goat to do clone the gene, which is the tau gene at the time, and publish that in 1998. That was an important paper because it put tau significantly on the map because prior to that most of the work had been done on amyloid for Alzheimer's disease and tau being forgotten about. Significant work has happened since on tau and indeed many of these disorders are lumped under the title of tauopathies at this stage. At the time Mike Hutton and others and ourselves described mutations in the gene and that in particular was at chromosome um, 17 as I said, Q, and the tau gene. And in particular, at exon 10 in the tau gene, there seem to be a clustering of mutations, and especially three prime of that exon in a splice sequence, which was a stem loop and a loop. The original pedigree that we described that time, DD Pat, happened to be a mutation in the plus 14 position of that, which disrupted the splicing of exon 10, so that what happens in that circumstance is that exon 10 is included more frequently, resulting in four repeat tau protein excess of it. If the splicing is working normally, what happens is you get a 50-50 ratio of 3 repeat to 4 repeat tau in the adult brain. With the splice mutation, the DD pack, that forced it all to 4 repeat and you end up at 100% 4 repeat tau causing the neurodegeneration and subsequently the dementia, the Parkinson, and in rare patients motor neuron disease. Mike Hutton predicted that there were mutations found in the stem loop, all on that stem loop over time in, in 2000. Over the last 15 years, all those mutations were found except one, the plus 15 mutation. About two years ago, a patient came into our clinic, the proband here at the time, and he came in with amnesia and some personality change, with an also dominant history of a similar disorder in the family, which had been labelled different terms, including Alzheimer's disease. We checked the tau gene, a report came back that there was a polymorphism at the plus 15 site and we recognised in actual fact that was a causative because it would disrupt the stem loop and hence the patient would have excess 4 repeat in the brain. We characterised the pedigree, identified other members of the family who were affected and also identified other members in the UK who were affected with a similar disorder. And all the affected carry this plus 15 mutation whereas the unaffected don't carry the 15 mutation. So, this family closes the tau loop, in other words, having opened the loop with a plus 14 identification by the DD Peck family, Irish American family. We've now identified an Irish English family with a plus 15 mutation closing the tau loop, which happens to be similar in shape, although it's a bad drawing of interesting a Celtic cross, with this being the stem loop area, and having opened the cross or the loop um, in 1998, we now close, close the loop in 2015.